message comes from John chapter 6 verse 60 to 71 John 6 verse 60 to 71 let's do a response reading on hearing it many of his disciples said this is a hard teaching who can accept it aware that his disciples were grumbling about this Jesus said to them does this offend you what if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? The Spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled him. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Then Jesus replied, Have I not chosen you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. He meant Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, who, though one of the twelve, was later to betray him. Amen. Now let's all pray together that when we listen to God's word, we can receive this word of life, the voice of the Holy Spirit, and also pray for the senior overseer who is preaching that his lips will be anointed by the Holy Spirit and that he may have the wisdom and the knowledge and the power of the word. Let's earnestly pray together. God our Father, as you have commanded us this Holy Lord's Day, we thank you. Anoint your servant's lips, grant him the wisdom and the knowledge and the power of the word. Uh, in Jesus' name, Amen. The words of eternal life. They are, let's all read the sermon outline together. God is eternal. He sent the word which was in his bosom to the world. The word is Jesus Christ who came in the flesh, shed his blood and resurrected. He is the Son of God, the image of God's being. He came from God's bosom and was born through the body of a woman. Therefore, his words are the words of God who speaks from within him. Whoever hears his words yet does not accept them as the words of God, but as the words of man cannot obtain faith and is unprofitable for one spirit. However, if we come to him longing only for the word of eternal life, we will become a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Let us hear and follow the words of eternal life delivered through the Holy Spirit. If we accept them as the words of man, it does not benefit our spirit, and our souls will wander away from Jesus and be lost, unable to receive life. We do not come to church to see people. As the words of eternal life are in the church, we come to hear those words. Our faith is not of the flesh, but of the spirit, and thus it is a spiritual activity. The words of eternal life are in the church. Let us love our church. Do not come to church for the sake of people, but come seeking the words of eternal life. 
Amen. God is eternal. He is eternal. All the words He speaks to us are eternal, and even the life He gives us is eternal. His name is eternal, and even the grace He gives us is eternal. He does not give and take grace. Once He gives us grace, it lasts forever. But we cannot see the eternal God with our eyes. So many people close their eyes and they say, Well, God, where are you? God, where are you? They want to see Him. They want Him to be visible. And they, they want to have like a vague sight of Him at least. When you go to mountains to pray in the, in the old times, people would be crying out on the top of the mountain. They would say, God, where are you? God, where are you? We want to see you. They raise their hands and they seek God. But in the Bible, it clearly says nobody can see God. No one has ever seen God. It says in John chapter 1, verse 18, no one can see Him. So just, so just in an abstract concept, they try to find God, they seek God. But that's not it. What is our faith about? The Israelites said that they had seen God. But the God that the Israelites had seen was an angel. Stephen taught them in Acts chapter 7, verse 32 onwards. The Israelites, in other words, God whom Moses saw was not actually God himself, but the angel of God. The angel of God brought the law to the Israelites. Now, you're not even able to keep the law which was passed on to you through the angel. So how can you actually know God? Look. Our, our God, the Son of Man, is at the right hand of God. Lord, receive my spirit. And Stephen cried out. You and I are not trying to grope about trying to find this God who exists in our, in our minds or in our ideas. We have seen God, we have touched God. And we have actually witnessed with our own eyes how He works. The Word became flesh. And the one who came in the flesh is the image of God's being. He is the exact representation of God's being. So Deacon Stephen said, you are seeking some kind of image to see, but the image that the Israelites saw in the past is an angel. The image of God is actually the Son of Man who is at the right hand of God. Look at him. Lord, receive my spirit. And Stephen was stoned to death. We are looking at God, not with our physical eyes, not with the naked eye. Those whose spirits are alive can see God with their spirit in their spiritual eyes. He is the Word that became flesh. He was waiting for His time in Nazareth. He preached in Galilee. Finally, he came to Jerusalem and he was crucified and died. And God raised him and take it, t took him to heaven. And he was witnessed by many people, and now he is at the right hand of God. So when I pray, when I close my, eye, close my eyes, I see him. I'm not seeking the Father who is invisible. I'm not seeking to see the invisible Father, but I seek to see God whom I can see with my spiritual eyes. That is, 
he has revealed to us Jesus Christ. Look, he is standing at the right hand of God. I see the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. He is God. And he is our Christ. He is the Christ who saves us. So when I close my eyes, I see him. So when I pray, I am not groping about. I am focused on him only. I am focused on the Son of Man, the, the image of God's being. I've seen him. And I kneel before the image of God's being and I cry out to him. The gospel is, look, you should be able to see God. Let's all close our eyes. Please close your eyes. Close your eyes, everyone. Don't try to seek the God who is invisible, but seek Him, the Word that became flesh, the one that God sent to us, who was waiting for His time in Nazareth, and who started preaching in Galilee, and who went to Jerusalem, and who died on the cross and who resurrected and was taken up to heaven from Jerusalem and who is now at the right hand of God. Look at the Son of Man. He is God. He is the image of God's being. What does the Father look like? Don't look at Him. Look at the Son of Man, the image of God's being. Can you see Him with your naked eye? Can you see Him with the naked eye? It is towards Him that you have to kneel down. It is towards Him that you have to cry out. He has redeemed us and He sent us the Holy Spirit. Now you can open your eyes. We are not looking at something that doesn't exist. He came and existed in this world historically. And in the sight of many people, he was taken up to heaven. That's the one we believe and follow. The Bible is talking about him. The Bible testifies about the Son of God. So with man, we can't... It's impossible to see him. It's dead in John chapter 5, verse 37. We are seeing God. Now, when he was teaching his disciples, he said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. You must eat my flesh in order to have eternal life. You must drink my blood. Then you will have life. So there were many disciples who heard this and they said, we just can't understand what he's saying. How can he... In verse 52 of John chapter 6, it says, How can he give us his flesh to eat? How can he give us the blood, his own blood for us to drink? Oh, I just can't accept this. So many of them left Jesus and never returned. Now, who, do, who did they say that Jesus is? So Jesus said to Peter, to his disciples, are you going to leave too? But Peter answered, you have the words of eternal life, so who, to whom shall we go? These people, these people who left Jesus, saw him as a great philosopher. They regarded his words, his message as a great uh, philosophy. The Son of God. They didn't see him as the Son of God. They didn't see him as God, but they saw him as just a philosopher. Uh, Judas Iscariot is the same. The, the 11 out of the 12 disciples will confess, Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. They all acknowledge and believe that Jesus is the Son of God. But Judas Iscariot didn't see him as the Son of God, but only as a philosopher. So as a philosopher, he is an outstanding, he's a great person. So when he uh, betrayed Jesus to the high priest, he said, I have sold innocent blood. According to his calculations, as far as he knew Jesus, 
The way that he could defend Jesus was to curse himself. But Jesus said, I do not receive man's testimony, but I receive the testimony of God. God testifies, God, there is one who testifies about me, and that is God. And the Holy Spirit also testifies about me, and you, are, you will also be my witnesses. You refers to those who receive the Holy Spirit. You will be my witnesses. Because people see Jesus as a philosopher, they say, how can he give us his flesh to eat? How can he give us his blood to drink? They were able to listen and agree to all of his other teachings, but they couldn't accept these words. So they left him. So here Jesus said, the spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. You see me as a philosopher and you say, when I said eat my flesh, you think I, I was referring to this, the flesh of man. But that's not the case. My words, what I'm trying to say is that only, only the spirit can give life and my words are spirit and they are life. This is spiritual. Our faith is not of the flesh, it's spiritual, it's a spiritual life. It's a spiritual life. So if you come to church and you hear the message as the word of man, you will not be touched, you will not be changed. Your spirit cannot live. However, if you accept it as the words of God, then even this person like me, this lowly man as me, God gives the word as grace. And it's, it's so, it is very touching and the grace is enormous. So even though people hear the words of Jesus, they only see him as a man with a flesh, as just a great prophet or a great philosopher. And so, when Jesus said, eat my flesh, they couldn't understand it, even though they were able to understand all of his other teachings. The Spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. My words are spirit and they are life. So, even life is spiritual, the Lord's words are spiritual. So the church, we in the church, we come to hear the words which are spiritual. The words of eternal life are spiritual. Although you hear it through your ears, these are not the general knowledge of man. This does not come, this does not stem from the knowledge of man. These are spiritual words. Only the spiritual words can bring life to our spirit. Spiritual words. So many people today come to church. But if you don't, if they don't receive the spiritual words, they are not able to maintain their faith life. They are not able to keep their faith life. Our church has a a, a big a great number of people. There are churches that have been longer than us, but some of them only have a few dozen people. Then those pastors have great personality, better than me, with greater knowledge. But why? Why can't they? Only, why can they only have hundred people? After so many decades, why are they not able to build their own worship building? Why do they have to rent somebody else's building? There are about 50,000 or so churches and about 80,000 pastors in Korea. 
And the churches that have a worship building of their own, that have their own land and their own building, is only about 8,300 out of those 50,000. Why isn't this possible? But why why do people leave the churches that are in that are nearby in their area? Why do they come all the way to Shingi to or Shindorim to worship here? You know, do you come to see a handsome face? Do I look like an actor or hold? Even regarding Jesus, it says in Isaiah 53, there was nothing to admire about him. There was nothing that people should desire him. In his appearance, there was nothing to admire about him. When you came here, did you come because I have, I'm good looking? Did you come to see a handsome person? When you came, if you came to see hands and face, you probably have left long time ago. You, didn't you come to hear the word? You came here and you heard the word of God that came through Kim Gidong's lips. You repented, you baptized, you came into Jesus, you became a Christian. And after hearing this message, you received the Holy Spirit. After hearing the words, you received the gifts of the Holy Spirit. After receiving these words, you received power and experienced great miraculous time. Isn't this how you have maintained your faith life? The words of eternal life are here. Isn't that why you came here? If I was like everybody else, speaking knowledge or speaking about philosophy or teaching theology, do you think our church would have grown this much? I say a lot of things that things that theologians probably don't like to hear about, but the words of God are spiritual. That's why, that's why people come here to hear spiritual words, the words of eternal life. Our saints should at least say, you know, the words of eternal life are here, so to whom shall we go? Some people say, oh, there's no love in the church, and they make excuses, and they say, I don't want to come to church. You have to come longing only for the words of eternal life, the spiritual words. There is no reason for you to come for any other reason. We have to come to hear the spiritual words. Pastor Kidong Kim doesn't speak knowledgeable words of this world, but he speaks the gospel, he speaks the truth, he speaks spiritual words. That's why people come to hear this. According to, well, to, your, to your knowledge, to your mind, it might not be helpful, but your spirit is made alive by these words. It's the words of eternal life that you come to hear. Some people, if they have a, they are discontent about something, they say, well, I'm not going to give offerings anymore. Did you give offerings to me all this time? Were you giving offerings to me? You are giving offerings to God. It's, it's for your eternal relationship with God. That's why I wrote the book called Eternal Relationship. Please have a read of that. It's about your relationship, your eternal relationship with God. Some people say, I'm not going to give tithes. Do you think tithes are yours that you can do whatever you want with it? Some people say, I'm going to save it up and I'm going to use it somewhere else. What does it say in the Bible? You must give the offering to God in the in the time in time. If you don't, it will become sin, and God will demand it from you one day. What does the Bible say? Tithes belong to me, so bring it into my storehouse. Let there be food in my house. Food is something that that should never run out. But people think that tithes are their own and they can do whatever they want when it actually belongs to God. They say, "Oh, should I give it to God or not? Should I give it or not? Should I do what? Should I do with it? Do you think you can do that with tithes? Is that is that what you can do?" So many people today, even if you are angry, even if you are upset, you should not try to fight against God. You should not take what is God's and threaten God with it. Eternal life is what we are trying to hear. That's why we are leading our faith life. We are not doing it for any, or anyone else. We shouldn't have any hatred in our hearts. 
If there is hatred, you cannot receive the word of God. In the Bible, it says those who hate are murderers. If you hate, then you are a murderer. You're not able to receive the word of God. The word of God cannot enter the heart of a murderer. Cain could not receive God's heart. God's word, sorry. If you have doubts in your heart, if you have hatred, it is contentment or if you have this if you have all these grudges in your heart you cannot receive God's word some people say to me oh pastor because you're a liar because you lie I don't like you I can't hear your words I can't listen to you if that is the truth then I thought if that person cannot hear my sermons then that their spirit is in trouble this is serious that's why the Lord says to us pray so that you will not fall into temptation always pray so that you do not fall into temptation so that you can receive the words of eternal life you must long for the words of eternal life we give tithes we give offerings we dedicate and that should be the words of eternal life touching our hearts inspiring us moving us that's why we give these offerings just because of that money oh if you do this if I don't give this money then our church will be in trouble our pastor will be in trouble don't try to tease God with it for your own spirit's sake the words of eternal life is what we are, we are hearing that's why we come to Songwak Church even though it's a long distance we you must come to Songwak Church longing for the words of eternal life let's clench our fists and say together for you for here is the words of eternal life where shall we where else shall we go when you come here don't come to see me you don't Kim don't come here to see somebody else even if there are people that don't like you please come here because you want to hear the words of eternal let's all say it together for here are the words of eternal life for here are the words of eternal life where else shall we go please say this and honestly for here are the words of eternal life where else shall we go for here are the words of eternal life where else shall we go for here are the words of eternal life. Where else shall we go? That's really true. For you and me. What, what other relationship do we have? It's because there are the words of eternal life here. That there is a preacher and there are the listeners here together. That's how we became one. The words of eternal life. Words of eternal life. For that you have endured for the words of eternal life you have dedicated for the words of eternal life you are serving in the church you are being faithful to the church and you have hope isn't that right let's all stand let's sing hymn 539 let's clap our hands clap hand, clap your hand and let's sing this Mome Please close your eyes. 
Don't look for a God who cannot be seen, but seek the Son of Man who is at the right hand of God, our Lord Jesus, the image of God's being, our God. Our God, Jesus, look unto Him in your spirit. Look unto Him and cry out to Him. It will be delivered. Let's all pray.